Well, we often find ourselves living in the lies we've been told syndrome, right? Someone can tell us this when someone can tell us that, and we live the lie. We live the lie, right? We live a, a journey of lies. We believe that if someone says, hey, you'll never get tall. Hey, you'll never be able to ball. Hey, uh, you know, it would make you want to even make a rap. I wish I was a little bit taller. But if you couldn't get taller, right, you will, will just still find yourself living a lie, living a lie about why, why, asking yourself, why am I this, why am I that, why am I in jail, why am I in this kind of relationship, why am I me, why do I look like me, some would ask, right? Don't hate the player, hate yourself. In most relationships, do you listen or do you wait to talk? In most relationships, relationships not just with your intimate partner, but also with your job, with your associates, with your friends, do you listen or do you wait to talk? Many people uh, wait to talk. Waiting to talk cuts the other person off because, it, and it shows that you're really not listening, right? Because you're waiting to talk. You already have something that you want to say, whether it is related to the conversation you're having, whether it's uh, related to something from the past or something that has something to do with something else. Do you listen? In most relationships, do you listen or do you wait to talk? Waiting to talk is really... Uh, disrespectful in many many times because it cuts people off it cuts people off it shows no respect subscribe to my channel to counsel mr james Horton. let's talk more about this how good it is overshadowing how bad it is syndrome how good it is overshadowing how bad it is syndrome these are relationships we have with people these are uh, uh, intimate relationship we have with a partner. Marriage is even how good it is versus how bad it is syndrome. Oh, well, he or she don't hit me like my past relationship. Or he got a job and he feeds me and takes care of me. And so, you know, how good it is versus overshadowing how bad it is syndrome is an ugly thing, right? And it's something that we need to really focus on because we need to learn what good really is instead of always comparing it to how bad things once were, right? And bad is bad, right? It just has different levels to it, right? We need to examine this kind of stuff. Subscribe to my channel, The Counselor, Mr. James Hoyt. The gift of mental arming and mental charming. Gift of mental arming and mental charming. What this means is one, when one goes out in the public, when one goes out in society and finds itself in a certain place, going to a gas station, stopping at an unknown place, a bank or whatever, one must be mentally armed and mentally charming, right? Just in case one gets up on you, right? You must be charming in such a way to get up out of there, right? Not get caught in the trap. You must be uh, armed also, right? in other ways, right, to be able to make the right decision at the right time, to be able to be ready no matter what happens, right, stay ready so you have to get ready, right, the mental arming compared to the mental charming, stay mentally armed and mentally charmed in all the bases, subscribe to my channel and counsel, Mr. Chair, James Hoyt, let's talk more about this. Hey, do you believe accidents cause drug abuse or do you believe drug abuse causes accidents. Many of us are very confused on what causes what. We don't even know how one even got into an area of abusing drugs. Was it an accident that you started using? Was it an accident that you were uh, using and abusing while driving, right? Do accidents cause drug abuse or do drug abuse cause accidents? right? What caused your accident? What has you in a place, an uh, unstable place, a broken place, uh, a damaged place, an accidental place, or a purpose place, right? Do accidents cause drug abuse or do drug abuse cause accidents? Subscribe to my channel.
People don't look for partners who love them. They look for partners who love themselves. People don't look for partners who love them. They look for partners who love themselves. Some would question it. Some would say it doesn't make much sense. Some would really, really question, no, I want someone to love me. Yes, you say that. But our actions show that we look for partners who love themselves. You say, why should I love you and you don't love yourself? You always will go to that. Why should I love you when you don't love yourself? Get on drugs. Get your life toe up. Stop having what you once had. Stop caring for yourself. Stop nurturing yourself and grooming yourself, and you'll find that people will stop loving you, right? So people are attracted to those who love themselves, right? So one must love themselves. One must take care of themselves. Must want to put themselves in a first-class position in life, and then you'll find that what I'm saying has some truth to it. Subscribe. Scared to remember. Scared to remember syndrome. Scared to remember syndrome has uh, has us dealing with trauma, dealing with uh, issues with our baby mama. Scared to remember is uh, uh, so effective that it affects our flow of going forward in life. Scared to remember. Remember the things we've done to people. To remember things that people... People have done to us, scared to remember, affects us, scared to get ourselves out of that hole and address some of the things that we have gone through is such a, a devastating thing that many of us are scared to remember. Scared to remember causes many of us to start uh, finding ourselves intoxicated on drugs, alcohol, and whatever comes along just to make us not feel. So we find ourselves scared to remember and scared to grow, right? But it's important to know so you won't go. So let's not be scared. When it comes to our spiritual, orthodox, and church-like settings in this world, one must ask this question. I often ask this question. Does God lead you or does God or does your God deceive you? Does God lead you or does your God deceive you? Many of us find ourselves being in trouble, getting in trouble, playing the blame game, looking for blame to put on somebody like a parent, uh, a caretaker, a caregiver, or someone of that sort, especially God. But the question is, does God lead you, or do you find that God seems to deceive you? Because we put God's name on all kind of things. We put God's name when we sell a big package or something, when we uh, commit a large crime, believe we got in the way with it. So does God lead you or does God actually deceive you? Subscribe to my channel. Poor Hustler Syndrome. Poor Hustler Syndrome is a syndrome that doesn't need any particular thinking. Poor Hustler Syndrome is a syndrome without any morals or ethical guidelines involved in it. It's like back in the day, one had morals, right? One said, I'm not going to take from my own people. I'm not going to take from people that don't have anything. I'm just not going to tear my community down if I'm going to hustle, right? Poor hustle is a syndrome of individuals that don't care who they hustle from, don't care who they take from, don't care what they do and the consequences of what they do. Poor hustle is syndrome. is no hustle at all, right? Ask yourself, are you an individual with poor hustler syndrome tactics and morals about yourself? Subscribe to my channel, The Counsel, Mr. James Horton, on YouTube. Thomas Jefferson, was saying, Thomas Jefferson once wrote and said, all men are created equal. But we all know that he did not mean that. So, which brings me up, brings me to the topic of why do we as people say things that we don't mean? Many people say things and put out the quote on it to say, hey, I give my word. What does your word really mean? You know, all men are created equal. Are they truly created equal? Do does the people really believe that and that they mean that when they said it? Or was there a hidden agenda behind it all? Subscribe to my channel, Domestic Issues with the Council, Mr. James Horton, on YouTube. Domestic Issues with the Council, Mr. James Horton. All right.